What happens if you send a school level maths question to a bunch of flat earthers? Well, not much as it happens, but the results were fascinating all the same. Welcome everyone back to the channel to a new series that I'm tentatively calling the Simon Dan Saturday Sessions. Now this will be a weekly video about pretty much anything really. Could be science related, might not be science related, could be anything related. Fans of Tim for Tuesday and Flat Earth Friday need not worry though, I will not be messing around with them. They will always be on the channel. This is an additional video. But for this first uh, Saturday video, I didn't want to stray too far from the tracks regarding my normal content, so it does have a Flat Earther twist. Now about a month ago, a friend of mine contacted me and asked me if I'd be up for a collab video because he wanted to promote his new TikTok channel, Free Math Tutor UK. Now he's a math tutor and all round excellent guy and he creates free math tutoring content on TikTok to help people pass their exams. I said I'd come back to him once I'd had an idea, so I mulled it over for a week or two and then came back to him with this. What if I sent a GCSE math question to a load of flat earthers and see how they get on with it? Now they're always saying that they know more about the heliocentric model than we do. So I thought this would be the perfect chance for them to prove to us that very fact. Now, here it is. As you can see, the question isn't too easy, but it's definitely achievable for an average flat earther intellect, I'm sure. Now, the plan was to send this question to a load of flat earthers that I know, and then await their response. And then after the answers, we'll get Scott to give us a rundown of exactly how to answer that question, Free Maths Tutor UK style. So let's have a proper look at it, shall we? Okay, we can see we've got a nice globe here in the middle of the question. And it says the diagram below shows three points P, Q and R on the surface of the Earth. And you can take pi as 3.142 and R as 6,370 kilometers. Now the first part of the question asks you to, to calculate the difference in longitude between P and R. Part two of the question says, given that the distance between P and Q on latitude X N is 4392.079611 kilometers, calculate X. And then part three says, calculate the distance QR on longitude 24 degrees east. So how do you think the flat earthers will do with this question? I mean, it should be easy, right? After all, they know more about our model than we do, apparently. Well, you won't be surprised to hear that it did not go too well. And we'll start with the three flat earthers that I sent the question to on Discord. And that was Flat Out Truth, Kyle Adams, and Flatzoid's perspective. Now I sent a short bit of text asking them to have a go, and then I sent the question itself. And all three of those flat earthers totally ignored me. Not a great start, is it? Then I turned my attention to Instagram and I decided to send the question on there to another three flat earthers. Caleb Flat Earth, Tyler Hansen, and Santos Bonacci. Now I had a bit more joy here, but not in terms of the question itself, but more of a response. This was the response I got from Caleb. You have to be the most moron in the world, lol. When we're debating you timid soy boy, I'll entertain your stupid question once you grow a pair and show up to a dialogue between me and you. I responded, I said, I guess you'll never do the question then. By the way, you can't even spell pair in the right context, but I'm sure you're right about flat earth, lol. Caleb came back with, get out of my DMs unless you're prepared to debate, you stupid pussy. I just said lol, and he said, that's what I thought. Oh dear, Caleb, surely a little maths question as easy as that should not have rattled your cage so much, should it? Says a lot. Then we had Santos, and he sent me what can only be described as an inflammatory voice note, where he called me lots of rude words, and then that my mum was a rude word, and that he was coming for me. Now I resent him the question again in case he changed his mind, but he ignored me. And then finally on uh, Instagram, we have a message response from Tyler Hansen. Now he is the fittest flat earther on TikTok. He responded with, you're funny. I don't like to interact with people like you because I know what you are. I know you know what I know. You're just a liar and I'm an honest, caring human. Hopefully God will change your heart. I'll pray for you. I came back with, that's funny because I know you are wrong. So just to confirm, that's a no for the question. Tyler came back. Like I said, I'll pray for you, either for you to see past your indoctrination or to see the light of goodness instead of evil. I wasn't having that. So I said I am good, inherently good actually. So final chance to show us you know more than the average Globe Earther, not even going to attempt it. Tyler said, I'm too smart for your nonsense, dude. 
take your dogs and mockery of God and fly a kite. I said thanks for your time all the same. Then he went off on some weird tangent about how I'm kinda nice to flat earthers. I know, weird. Well, with the results I'd had so far, I wasn't holding out much hope for the email responses. I sent one to Nathan Oakley, of course, so far no response on that one, and another one on a guy called Daniel Tyler. He's also on TikTok, you would have seen me do a couple of shorts on his uh, his videos too. Now he did reply, but it was not what I was hoping for. In order to see the truth, you must first see the lie. I have seen and learned too much which contradicts everything we are supposed to think is true. Globe is a lie. No matter what fancy math on paper can fool the ones who refuse or are unable to see the truth. You can imagine my disappointment. Eight flat earthers so far contacted and not one of them has attempted the question. There was unfortunately only one more place left to turn and that would be X, formerly known as Twitter. Now, the flat earthers on there are extremely active and pretty toxic. Surely I can get one of them to try the question. So I sent it to a further four flat earthers, two of which ignored me, Karen B and Hombre Ingle, but two did respond. Now the first is Moon Rocket. Now she's made a lot of videos and TikToks on me, so I thought why not send her the question? And this was her response. Okay, hold on, 79 degrees. I was impressed. I said that's question one, well done. Number two and three? I don't math, sorry. Because like, what is math? Math. Well, at least she got the first question right. Well played to her, even if she doesn't math, as she says. And finally, a response from a flat earther on X called Chuck Huber. Now we've had a bit of dialogue before on, uh, on X through DMs, and he's actually a pretty decent guy. He's not your typical flat earther. But to start with, he sent me some images of Stephen Hawking and Chewbacca for some weird reason. And then he had a pop at the question. Okay, and this is all just in my head. 55, 39.51 and 11,060-ish. Am I close? Now you can explain Stephen Hawking's interpreter for me. I said, all incorrect. Thanks for trying though. He was curious, so he said, what are the correct answers? And I said, you'll find out, winky face. He said, lol, my answers are correct or damn close and you're a fraud for lying about it. Charming, eh? Now Chuck did get back to me after this and he had a second attempt and he was a bit closer with his values but they were still wrong. Now before I show you the video from Scott with the full solutions, I just want to say kudos for Chuck for at least giving it a go. Well done buddy. The rest of you, poor poor performance. Don't you ever say that you know more about the heliocentric model than we do ever again. Right Scott, why don't you tell us all how it's done? Maybe the reason that many people believe the Earth is flat is because they struggled to understand globe geometry like this and instead stuck with a simple disk. If you're one of those people, you've come to the right place. Now, if you are a flat earther, you might think that this is a diagram of a basketball, but it is in fact a diagram of planet Earth. And in question one, we are asked to calculate the difference in longitude between P and R. So firstly, what is a line of longitude, right? What does that mean? Well, it's a line that goes from the North to the South Pole, Okay, and we give a description to this line based on the rotation that it is either east or west from a special line of longitude, which we call the prime meridian. Now, the prime meridian indicates where we have decided that zero degrees of longitude lies. So in our diagram, it would be a line going from north to south somewhere around here. And so what I've just done is I've just drawn this sort of central line that goes straight through the, uh, the center of the globe here and roughly where the prime meridian is just to help people visualize this a little bit easier. So in question one, we're asked to calculate the difference in longitude between P and R. So clearly P lies on this line of longitude here at 55 degrees west and R lines on this line of longitude here at 24 degrees east. So how can I calculate the difference in longitude? Well, I need to think about the difference in longitude between these two lines of longitude here. So you can think about it in this way. If I want to get to the prime meridian from this point here, I need to go 55 degrees in this direction, right? That's what, you know, the, the, the notion of this being 55 degrees west tells me is that, you know, I've gone 55 degrees in this direction. So to get back, I need to go an additional 55 degrees back to get to the prime meridian at zero degrees longitude. And then if I want to get from there to this line of longitude, which is the line of longitude that R lines on, I need to go an additional 24 degrees east to get to, to where R is in terms of its longitude, right? So therefore, or in total, for question one, I have gone a total of 55 degrees plus 24 degrees, right? That's the separation. And it also works for us to think about this in the other way, right? I'd get the same answer. So the separation, the, the difference in longitude is 79 degrees between P and R.
So in question two, I'm told that given the distance between P and Q on the latitude X degrees north is 4,392.079611 kilometers, calculate X, right? So calculate this latitude here. So how do I do this? Well, in order to do this, I need to use the formula for distance along a particular latitude, and that is given by the following. So the distance between two points in general, right, not just these two points, but along some line of latitude is, is D, PQ, right, PQ in general, uh, is given by theta divided by 360 degrees times 2 pi r times the cosine of the latitude right, the angle of latitude, okay? So here, theta is actually the difference in longitude, and r is the radius of the Earth. And if you would like to know where this formula comes from, please let me know in the comments and we can go ahead and derive it. It's a bit tricky to draw, but I'm more than happy to do it if people would like to see it, okay? It just comes from considering a, a right angle triangle within the diagram. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this to our situation. So first things first, what is our theta value here, okay? So remember, the theta is the difference in longitude between the two points on this line of constant latitude, right? This is a formula for the distance along a line of constant latitude. And we've already worked out what the difference in longitude is between essentially P and Q, because we already worked out the difference in longitude between P and R, which means that for us, theta is equal to 79 degrees. And for our purposes here, we're going to take R to equal 6,370 degrees kilometers, right? It's just a rough approximation to the radius of the Earth. So let's plug all of these values in and then solve for our latitude. Okay, so we know that the distance PQ is given by this number here. So we know that 4,392.079611 is equal to the difference in longitude. So 79 over 360 times 2 times pi times the radius 6370 times the cosine of the x degrees latitude that we want. So let's go ahead and tidy this up a little bit. So we get that 79 over 360 times 2 times pi times 6370. Okay, and that is 8783.02. So we have 4392.079611 is equal to 8783.02 cosine x degrees latitude. So let's divide both sides by this number here. So we have 4392.079611 over our answer, and we get 0 0.5. So you get the cosine of x degrees latitude is equal to 0 0.5. So we just need to take the inverse cosine of both sides. And obviously, if we do that, you'll see that we get 60 degrees as our latitude there. And I should say 60 degrees north. Now in question three, we're asked to calculate the distance QR on the line of longitude 24 degrees east. So actually calculating distances on lines of longitude is much, much easier, okay? So what we can think about is if we take the point, so essentially what we're doing, right, is calculating the distance here, right, this curved uh, arc length here. And we can think about taking these points Q and R and connecting them to the center of the earth via a radius, okay, or via a pair of radii. And so I've just gone ahead and roughly sketched that on the diagram here. You can see the two radii connecting the points uh, with this arc here, Q and R. And I've drawn a small schematic of it down here. So the idea is, is that, well, we can easily work out what this distance is, okay, because we know how to work out the formula of the arc length of a circle, because we have two radii here. We just need to know what is this angle theta here. Well, this angle is precisely the difference in latitudes, okay? It's the difference in latitudes, and what is that? Well, you can imagine that here I'm 60 degrees north, right, at the point Q. I've already found that in the previous question. So I'm 60 degrees north here, I'm 60 degrees south here, which means I need to go 60 degrees downwards to get to the equator, right, at zero degrees of latitude, and then continue another 60 degrees down to get 60 degrees south, which means that this angle here is 120 degrees, and therefore the distance QR, this arc length, is just this angle divided by 360 times by 2 pi r, or times by the circumference of the circle, okay? So 3 is just simply going to be 120 divided by 360 times 2 times pi times the radius, which is 6, oops, 6370, and we get 13,341 kilometers. And that is our final answer there. 
Amazing work, thanks buddy. Please do check out Scott's TikTok if you know anyone struggling with their maths in school. He really is a great tutor and I'm sure will help out anyone that needs it. I will of course link his TikTok page in the description, please do check it out. But for now we're done for this first ever video on Saturday, the Saturday sessions. Thank you so much for joining me, it is appreciated, obviously. I do hope you like this one, and if you did, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. As I said, this will be a weekly video on a Saturday, and I will try and get out of the studio as much as I can. Obviously some might be in the studio, but I'm hoping there'll be more out and about like this. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.